Hi everyone! Welcome back or welcome to my channel. For those who don't know me, I'm Melody and I just graduated from a dual degree program between Scripps and Columbia. Before I started my job, I wanted to reflect back on my college years, so today I wanted to talk about a decision I made five years ago to choose Scripps over UC Berkeley and UCLA. I also wanted to start off by saying the purpose of this video isn't to pit schools against each other. I think they're all really good schools. The main goal of making this video was to give more exposure to colleges that the majority of people probably haven't even heard of. I've been super fortunate the past few years to have gotten the opportunity to go to both a small liberal arts college and a bigger research school because it gave me the unique perspective of knowing how different it is. Now that I've gone to both types of schools and graduated, I've realized what defines a good school is not just prestige and name and college rankings. A good school is what you think is good and what you think is best for you. What do I mean by this? Well, what do you think you would want to do after college? How do you think going to this school will help you achieve what you want after college? But what if I don't know what I would want? Then where do I think going would be best to go to figure out what I would want? And if you're watching this right now, you might be thinking, Melody, why are you asking me all of these questions? Well, it's because I also had someone who told me to think beyond college names and rankings back then. But this is something that took me five years to fully understand. So I wanted to make this video and hopefully you'll understand and get this a lot faster than I did. To tell the story on how I grew into this mindset, let's flash back to five years ago when I was deciding colleges. Before I committed to Scripps, I was deciding between Scripps, UC Berkeley, and UCLA. Whenever I talked to my friends and family about this, everybody was leaning towards UC Berkeley and UCLA because of their big name. But I think because Scripps was also an option, it kept on lingering in my head and I was very lucky because I had a friend who went to another liberal arts college, Pomona College. So I reached out to my friend and I told him I was considering these schools, but I really wanted advice because he went to a liberal arts college and I didn't know what that meant. This is kind of embarrassing, but I actually didn't do that much research on liberal art colleges despite applying for some of them. When I was in high school, I never thought I would go to a liberal arts college. I only applied to the Claremont colleges because I grew up in SoCal and it was only a 20 minute drive from my house. So I thought, why not? That was a quick tangent on why I had to ask that. So I was talking to my friend about this and something that really stood out to me was him asking me, well, what do you want in the future? What do you think your goals are? And that was the first moment when I started to realize I had never stopped to think about what I actually wanted in the future and why I even applied for the colleges that I did. But at the time, I was still very immature and I was still really disappointed I didn't get into any Ivy Leagues, which my perspective has changed a lot on, so please stay until the end of the video to hear why. But back then, 17-year-old Melody was stuck in her own world. She was thinking about things like, I didn't get into my dream school, therefore I'm not going to be successful. And at the time, I didn't know what success meant. At the time, I thought good credentials meant success. And because a lot of my friends and family were emphasizing how UC Berkeley and UCLA had a big name, I really did start leaning towards choosing between these schools. So I told my friend all of this and he said something to me that still stands out to me to this day. UC Berkeley and UCLA do have a bigger name, but there are so many students on campus. If you go to Scripps, while not as many people would know what it is, it's a lot smaller, you'll have a lot more opportunities, you already stand out because it's a small college. I'm so thankful he said that to me, but I have to admit 17 year old Melody still had some doubts and concerns. Another goal of this video is to debunk a lot of presumptions that people have of liberal art colleges. I've heard things like, there's not as many resources or access to opportunities because of how small the schools are, or liberal arts schools aren't good places to major in STEM, or it's hard for liberal art college students to find a job. I can see where they're coming from, because when I was 17, I also had the same concerns in the beginning. But now that I've graduated and I think about these presumptions, I don't necessarily think of them as true or false. I think of it as it depends on what angle you see it. It depends on what you want. Overall, I do want to say I think coming to Scripps was the best path for me and it is the reason I achieved a lot of the things I didn't ever think I could and grew so much as a person. But I also want to preface, everything I share here 
are my personal experiences and opinions, so it's not necessarily representative of how other liberal art college students might feel. But I'm hoping what I share here today may open or introduce some thoughts for you all. So to address the first presumption, there's not as many resources or access to opportunities because of how small the schools are, I want to quickly introduce Scripps and the Claremont Colleges because I think some people might not be familiar with these schools. For those who aren't familiar with the Claremont Colleges, it's a consortium with seven schools. There are five undergrad colleges, Scripps, Harvey Mudd, Pitzer, Pomona, and Claremont McKenna, and two grad schools, CGI and KGI. If you combine all the schools together, it feels like a medium-sized uni university. And because of this, going to Scripps felt like the best of both worlds for me. I got the small college experience with access to medium-sized university resources. I got to take classes on the other campuses. I've taken engineering courses at Harvey Mudd, econ courses at CMC, and more. You also get access to career fairs on the other campuses. Harvey Mudd has a lot of tech career fairs that Fang and a lot of other companies come to, and Scripps and Claremont McKenna has a lot of investment banking and consulting career fairs or networking opportunities that hosted people from big investment and consulting companies. Scripps is also a women's college, and reiterating on the best of both worlds feeling, I felt like I got the atmosphere of going to a women's college and getting that women empowerment, but also getting a co-ed experience from being part of the Claremont Colleges. I really liked how you got to choose how much of a women's college you wanted to make it. I can understand the concern of smaller colleges not having as many resources as a larger university due to its size, but I do think because liberal art colleges are smaller, it allows for more tight-knit communities, more personalized attention for faculty, and these allow opportunities for undergrad research, internships, and mentorship. I want to share some personal stories to address the other presumptions. Number one, the story of how I became a STEM major. I applied for all my colleges as an econ major, but my senior year of high school, I actually had this sudden desire to be a STEM major. I think I felt this way because when I was in high school, I was very immature. I was more concerned about keeping up a good GPA for college apps. So I avoided all those scary sounding AP science courses in high school. And because of that, I felt like it was too late. It was impossible to catch up in college because I didn't have the educational foundation to do so. But after I talked to my friend from Pomona and he told me about the small classroom sizes and close relationships to professors, I felt like if I really wanted to have a better shot at pursuing STEM, it would probably be more plausible at a smaller school than a bigger one. Liberal art colleges are known for having a very tight-knit community and collaborative one. I definitely felt this way at Scripps and the Claremont Colleges, both about the students around me and the professors here. I don't think I would have been able to survive all of these classes without my friends. I had a lot of study buddies. It was really a great support system. Professors here also really care about their students and they really want to help you succeed. This was a really difficult path for me in the beginning and I still remember sometimes when I went to office hours, my mood was particularly down sometimes because the material was just so hard and sometimes I was trying really hard to fight back tears. I'm pretty sure some of my profs have heard my voice crack when I was talking, but my profs have always been very patient in teaching the material and explaining things until I got it and encouraging me when I didn't believe in myself. I really liked how personable the profs here are. Whenever I talk to friends at research schools, they're often shocked by how many office hours liberal arts students get and about how our professors knew all of our names. To address the concern liberal arts schools aren't good places to major in STEM, I think people feel this way because liberal arts schools have their students take a variety of classes that might not be directly related to your major. So for example, even if I am a physics major at a liberal arts school, I still need to take a bunch of humanities classes to fulfill my GEs. Whereas if I was at a research school, you probably wouldn't have to take all those extra humanities classes. I think with this particular concern, it's not true or false, it just comes down to personal preference. For me, I think going to a liberal arts college for STEM was the best path for me because I was learning so many new STEM concepts. I was building a foundation to becoming a STEM major. I personally wouldn't have been able to take all STEM classes at once, especially not in the beginning of my college years. So 
I really appreciated these humanities classes being there too because it felt like it gave me the space to think about things outside of STEM. These humanities classes also widened my perspectives and I wasn't thankful for this at the moment. I am now. Thank you Scripps for making me write all those essays because my writing skills have improved a lot and this actually prepared me for my job as a product manager in tech. Number two, the story of how I got into tech. This story is to address the presumption that it's hard for liberal art college students to find a job. And on a Seattle STEM trek, which was hosted by Scripps' Career Center, and I got to go to Seattle for a week to visit companies like Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, and network with our college alumni. This was a very memorable experience for me because before I had this trek, I never imagined myself working at a big tech company. I'm actually the first person in my family to get in, and I don't think I would have even thought of applying if it wasn't for this trek because I felt really empowered by the alumni I met. Also, the tight-knit community I mentioned earlier doesn't just apply to the current students around you, I think it also applies to the alumni network. Every time I reach out to a Claremont alum on LinkedIn, there's a bigger chance they will respond than not respond. I credit the Claremont alumni here for helping me get all the job opportunities that I did. I got my first internship in college, being a product manager intern at Intuit while I was at Scripps. I was introduced to the company from an Intuit hosted event at Claremont and the alumni I connected with taught a girl who had no idea how to write a resume, how to interview, how to break into industry. And having all the support to get my first internship built up the pathway to get my internships at Meta, I wrote eight because of all these academic and career achievements. It was a place where I found my home, lifelong friends, professors who really inspire me, discovered myself, discovered what I love, discovered what I don't like. I had really cool experiences here like meeting Crazy Rich Asians author Kevin Kwan. He said I look like his cousin. I met the best piano professor anybody could ever ask for and rediscovered my love for music and performing and miraculously ended up majoring in piano too. It's just so many unexpected things happen coming here. Of course, no institution is perfect. Of course, there were both up and down moments, but I wouldn't trade any of this because I wouldn't have grown into the person I am today. Wow, I'm sorry I got really emotional at the moment. Reminiscing about all of this just really made me miss grips. Hopefully, these stories help address some of the concerns that people might have of attending liberal art colleges. I know another concern people might have is financial costs because it's a private school. But most of these liberal art colleges offer good financial aid packages and a lot of these schools have this thing where everybody who applies are considered for merit scholarships. When I was here, I had friends who told me going to the Claremont colleges would have been around the same or even cheaper than a UC. So you never know what you'll get unless you apply. Now that I've graduated, I want to share to any incoming high school senior, really think about what you want in the future. A lot of people are going to give you advice on what they think is best. And I understand where they're coming from and it is okay to listen to advice, but in the end of the day, the person who will actually be experiencing the college and the school is you. So really think about what you want. In my other video, I talked about going to an Ivy League being my biggest dream in high school, but now that I've graduated, I realized back then, I didn't fully understand why going to an Ivy League was my biggest dream. Back then, I was still discovering myself and because Ivy Leagues have a big name, because a lot of people want it, I thought I wanted it too. I want to acknowledge the privilege of having an Ivy League degree, but I also want to point out that some things aren't as glorified as they may seem. It's important to remember that no institution is perfect, every college or university has both pros and cons. The overall quality of education and access to opportunities can vary widely regardless of their classification as liberal art colleges or universities. So apply for more schools, consider all of your options. I really hope this video was informative. If you enjoyed it, please give a thumbs up. And if you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. My next video is going to be about transitioning from Scripps to Columbia. So stay tuned and see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.